Hawazu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum my name is shuaib khan and welcome to maxafter.com's another very exciting tutorial i'm pretty excited about this tutorial because it took me some time to figure it out how to do this thing there are many ways of doing this tutorial so basically i have tried to kept it very simple so that everybody can understand you can also do this um, animation with the help of bones as well but i've um, done it manually so that um, is easier for you guys to understand. So this is what we'll be doing. Right. So if you want to see the smoother version of this video, you can also log on to my blog and uh, check out the video there. Don't worry, and it looks very difficult, but it's not that difficult actually. So I'll glide you through this tutorial. So are you guys ready? So let's start the tutorial. Okay, here we are in uh, 3ds Max. So what we're going to do is first uh, go to the go to shapes, and here we'll click the text. We'll write down transformers, right? So we're just doing the the shading first, texture and mapping. Click on the front viewport. The text appears there. So just um, click on Arial and just write trans. And with your arrow key, you can select Transformers Normal. So this is um, Transformers font. You can also find it um, if you Google Transformers font. I'm sure you'll find out this um, this font. Right. So let's go and very quickly reduce the size because it's pretty big. You can move, uh, you know, the perspective view. Middle mouse button, you can, you know, move it. And Alt and middle mouse button, you can, pad, you know, move it here and there, wherever you like. Okay, and with the scroll button you can you know, zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so this is front view quote and let's go to change the coning to 1. I'm going to give some gaps in it. Right, so let's go and apply bevel to it. Here we are in bevel and just going to apply 0 0.4 0 0.4 and 8. So if you've got problems here Sometimes it happens because of the font, and sometimes it's because of the bug. So we can just click this keep lines from crossing, so it won't cross anymore. Right. So as you can see, the bevel is from the back side. Yeah. But you want to bevel it from the front as well. So turn on the level 3 and again 0.4 and minus 0.4. Right. So it's beveled from both sides now. And the height. Basically, this is the height, you know, extrusion level. Let's keep it eight. Let's save the file as well. Right, okay. Um, let's maximize the perspective view. Click here, and the view is maximized. Okay, let's go and apply a shader to it. So here we are in the shaders. First one is selected by default. And what we do is just go to diffuse and click diffuse. Here we'll apply noise. So you got noise here. Double click it, you'll see the bigger version, you know. So you'll know what's happening. Right, okay, let's go and apply fractal. So in color swatch one, click none, and here you're going to apply click bitmap. So you go to the maps and material, I'm sure you have this map as well, you know, it's in metal. If you have 3ds Max, then you should be having this. You go to metal, in metal, apply this here, galfplat.jpg, right, and then you go back one step and again click color swatch 2 bitmap again we go to the same folder and here we we'll apply diamond 1 so this are material applied and then we go back one more step two steps and open up the maps here in the bump we'll click none and go to bitmap again the same folder metal and then we go to all metal here we just increase it to minus 60 so that we can see it's you know you can see the small holes there okay go to reflection bitmap and apply go to um, a folder called reflection here we apply this reflection so all standard materials you know that comes with uh, 3ds max here just turn it down to 5 or something you know just close this and let's go and apply it to the Select the move tool, okay, and then yeah, just go and apply it. You know, select after selecting it. If you click this, it will show the material applied. Right. So right now, it needs UV mapping. 
let's go and apply UV W map. If you can't see it, it's UV W map. Yeah. And let's change to box. And we want it, this is basically stretched. We want it to be, you know, properly applied. So we go down to bitmap fit. And again, we go to the, fold, uh, to the folder metal. And we'll apply this first one. So I'll pick up the size of this, you know, and automatically adjust it, as you can see here. So let's come out of maximize mode. And let's go and uh, put a camera here, free camera, select it. Just want to show you, you know. Right, so here we are. Let's move it down a little bit. Put it here. Right, and let's go and apply spotlight, target spot. Put a front viewport, put it in the middle, you know, and increase it. Let's make sure it covers the whole text. So let's move it up. Let's turn on shadows. Intensity should be two for this. Let's go and render and see how it looks. So as you can see, the top area is highlighted. Right. So we want to move this, you know, a bit forward so that we can see the highlighted areas here. Let's maximize it, you know, so that we can see what's happening. So this is basically a moving towards the front part, you know. Now let's render it. Go to lights again and go to target spot. And again, put another from underneath, you know. Okay, this time make it 1.6. And again, turn on the shadows for this as well. Right. So shaping up. Let's go to Omni here and apply Omni. Put Omni in the front viewport just near where O is. Okay, here's the top viewport. You can see what's happening, you know bird's eye view. Right. And let's change this to 0.6. Let's go and see, render and see how it looks. Okay. Let's go to maps again. Okay, here change the specular to 34 and this to 27. Right. Let's see how it looks. So it's coming up and let's bring it forward a little bit more, you know, so it looks cool. Right, so this is our texture and mapping. One more thing, we need to give it a shade, blue shade. Go back to, to our map here. Save your files as well. Turn on, tick the color, self-illumination, and go to the swatch here. Just get some, you know, bluish kind of color. Keep it dark. And now if you render, you'll see it's blue. If you want to keep it more blue, then move it up a little bit more. So it's blue now. So you can just, you know, adjust the color like this. Right, so this is, you know, basically texture mapping done. And now let's go and uh, do the real thing. Right, so basically what I've done is we need to do it individually, you know, you can't apply the, the breaking up of text, you know, to the whole thing here, you know. What we do is we just go back to text here and delete all the text that we done. So we just keep T here. T. Yeah, so here we are. We've got only T. Let's go and right click and isolation, isolate selection. So now we've got only T, so nothing else is in there. So what we can do is press P on your keyboard so you've got perspective mode and we can, you know, play around. Right, so this is our text. So let's break it up. Right, uh, before that, uh, you know, I've treated the text. You know, the T is a bit stretched. So we go here, text, and uh, we go to edit spline. Added spline, just click here and let's select the vertex. So let's bring it down. No, it depends how you want to play. Okay. That's how original it is, you know. You can spend more time to make it look cooler. Right, okay, save your work as well. And now what we need to do is let's break this text. Go to perspective, right click, and edge faces, edge faces. So we can see the faces here. This is what we need to do. We need to break it up, cut it up basically, and then animate each piece. So for that, we go to shapes. Let's go and apply a box. And on top viewport, create a box. You know, go to modify and uh, that's your box here. Make it bigger so it covers the whole text. 
So it's basically going to chop it in the middle, you know. Okay, let's make it thicker. Turn on the toggle here. Press Shift on your keyboard and make a copy. This time, let's just um, make it smaller, you know. Um, I hope you guys are following me. Um, what I'm doing is just I'm gonna chop it with Pro Cutter, you know, nothing else. So this is the place where you can just spend more time and make it look cooler, you know. I'm just doing it quickly because otherwise this tutorial is gonna be hours long. Make another copy and let's go and again press shift and make another copy. This is we're just making copies, you know. Basically we're making kind of a cage around it. So this is how you're gonna chop it, you know, into pieces. So what you're gonna do is uh, right click this one, you know, and convert to editable mesh. Here go down and press attached, click attached, and select the rest of the boxes that we just created, you know, around the T. Do not select the T. All the boxes are selected, I guess, yes. Right, so they are selected now. What we need to do is we go to now, okay, we're here in ge geometry, and here we just open this, go to compound, and here we'll, we'll select Pro Cutter. So this is the tool that we use to cut this T. We just uh, check Auto Extract Mesh, Explode by Elements, Stock Outside Cutter, Stock Inside Cutter, that's it, you know. And pick Cutter Object. So Cutter Object is already selected, so we extract selected. So we select this here cutter box 4 and then we move up and then s again click pick stock object so stock object is what is T so let's let's click T so here we are and press delete so all your you know boxes are gone now nothing complex we just chopped it you know can you see that it's been chopped so what we do here is again we'll select T the whole T here and deselect the rest for that we go and click here and deselect press control and deselect the rest because I want to just uh, again isolate it you know and okay press isolate selection if you don't have if you can't see it then it's isolate selection so this is front viewport here select all of it go to hierarchy and here affect pivot only and here center to object so all the pivots are central centralized you know now let's animate it so go to uh, hierarchy again effect pivot let's go and move it down here somewhere okay move it up here somewhere so let's make it look like a gun you know so it forms into a gun or something so here move it up as well so this is the part where you can just play around go and select make sure angle snap toggle tool is turned on so let's go and go to frame 5 and auto key right let's animate it okay here we are transforming it select the second one again we'll go and we'll just go to hierarchy effect pivot we just want to you know, adjust this pivot right let's go to this time seven seven frames some parts come forward some cards go back you know so again effect pivot and right again go back to five ok you need to come out of hierarchy mode and we are still here rotate tool is selected so let's move backwards Let's do this with the other one as well. So, uh, you know, this is kind of, you know, kind of accidental, you know, you just go and play around. So go to hierarchy, effect, pivot again, and here, move it up, and back. Right, and this time, let's go and move it back as well. So let's go and see the animation. As you can see, so you can change the timing here, you know, this one probably starts here somewhere. Right? Okay. And the rest is, um, for example, this T here. Um, let's go this one. 